Do you have low water pressure? <laughs> it's, it's not just a nuisance, it's a signal that something is seriously wrong with your home's plumbing system. Whether it's from clogged water pipes, a failing pressure regulator, maybe it's a well pump pressure tank, maybe it's a well pump pump that's gone bad, or maybe it's hidden leaks inside your plumbing system. Low water pressure can disrupt your daily routine and indicate a deeper water problem within your home. But if you don't address it now, those small things can escalate into a huge higher water bills, a huge repair costs, damaged appliances, and major costly repairs. So how can you fix low water pressure and avoid that headache? Let's dive into it and talk about it right now. Now, low water pressure, there's several different factors that we have to look at. A, do you live in a private well? B, do you have city water? Two big things. So let's just try to separate. Let's start with private wells. I'm sorry for you people. Most people in America, 80% or 85% have their own city water supply. 15% are actually in a private well, but we find that most water pressure issues are on a private well. So first thing that you have to understand if you own a private well is that um, you have a pump that's in the earth. Sometimes they're on top of the earth and they're drawing that water up and into the house. So your pump is the number one thing you have to look at. If they're submersible pumps, you have to remember that things like iron can plug the inlet ports of that uh, pump, which reduces the water pressure. Iron is a big issue. If you want to learn more about iron, check out our link on red water or red iron in your water, and you can learn more about how iron is oxidizing, causing that, uh, is oxidizing around that pump and plugging it, or maybe the pipe coming into the home is oxidized. Because what happens with iron is it actually plugs a plumbing pipe and reduces it in diameter through the inside. We've literally cut pipes in half and seen just like a less than a pencil of, of water line being able to go through it. And that's because the organics in the water can either plug the pump, plug the pipe coming into the pressure tank, and also leaving the pressure tank to the home. If you have galvanized plumbing, oh my God, that's why you have low water pressure. I hate to say it, but you probably want to start to consider replacing the plumbing system in the home. You may want to start to take and make that investment every year, take a section at a time and have plumbers replace it. Why is that? Galvanized loves organics. So galvanized plumbing literally clogs up the fastest because for whatever reason, it attracts the particles out of the water and plugs it. It's unbelievable. So any home built around the 50s, 60s or before, you really have to take a look at that galvanized plumbing. And if you have it, put it on your budget to repair it because there, there, there is your culprit. Going back to those private wells that may not have galvanized plumbing or they may, um, when you have that organic in the water, that can plug plumbing pipes and reduce the water pressure. We talked about the pump being plugged up. Maybe the pump is old. Maybe you can walk downstairs and take a look at the pressure gauge. There's a pressure gauge on the side of the pressure tank. That pressure gauge tells you how much pressure you have. And yes, that's a huge indicator. The average well should have a swing. If when you look at that, there should be 10 to like 120. It should be most wells are set between 50 and 70 PSI. What that means is the pump turns on when it, the pressure drops to 50, turns off when it hits the 70. Some people have it set from 50, uh, excuse me, yeah, 40, 60 or 50, 70. I apologize. I got it backwards. There's uh, 40, 60 or 50, 70. So there's a 20 point swing in between the turn on where it turns the pump on in the earth and to when it turns it off in the earth. And meanwhile, that pump, which is a single speed pump is pushing that water at nine, 10, 20, 12 gallons a minute flow rate into your pressure tank. Now that pressure tank has a bladder in it and it goes, that bladder goes up and down and there's air above that rubber bladder. So when the the pump is not on, that bladder is expanding, pushing the water to your house. And since that pump is doing nine gallons a minute, but your faucet's only doing two, right? 
that leaves you seven gallons a minute that's filling up that pressure tank. And then when that pressure hits 70 or 60, it turns the pump off. Now, if that bladder tank is broken, ding, 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 that pump could be going off and on, off and on, and resulting in a lower water pressure in the home. It's a very bad thing to do. Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, very bad. If you see that pressure gauge when you're using water going up and down, up and down, please call a well company right away. Why? Because that pump is going off and on, off and on, off and on in the earth, and it will fail, number one. Number two, you're aggravating the aquifer that that pump sits in. You could end up with, like lots of our clients have, have ended up with sand in their house because they were like, I don't know, just I kept hearing it. I didn't know what that meant. And next thing you know, they're paying us to put a very expensive sand filter in the home because they did not address it earlier. <clears throat> That's why this is a very good video for all of you to know or to learn about that low pressure issue and get that thing resolved right away. Now, we've addressed that pump, we've addressed the pressure tank, which is a big issue, and we've addressed the plumbing that comes into it with organics. Uh, obviously, you also have plumbing pipes that are going to the rest of the house, so what could cause low pressure issues there? Well, let's take a look at it. If you don't have a water softener, calcium, which is rock attached to this water droplet, or iron, think about if it's an iron molecule is attached to that water droplet, not only can it plug the plumbing pipes and reduce the water pressure, but it can hit that aeration faucet or your faucet and plug the small orifices that come out of the faucet or shower head. So sometimes we've had success where someone said, hey, it's my master bathroom for some reason. Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll go take apart all the fixtures, drain down the house. That means we turn off the water. When we let all the water flow down into the basement of the house, yes, it spills out on the concrete. Um, and then we let air get through the plumbing pipes. Now, buyer beware, when you let air in the plumbing pipes, you're gonna oxidize all the garbage that's built up inside the plumbing. And so we, when we flush water through it, it can plug other small orifices, whether in the dishwasher or other faucets, uh, angle stops, other things like that. But we need to do something to clean out those pipes. So that is one thing that you can do is literally drain down the house, let air get in there, then turn on the water again and ram that water through there. Pro tip, take off all the aerators and turn on the water when you do that so the water comes out right away and make sure the drain is going. We don't, have, we don't want a slow drain because you're going to really speed up the water without the aerator on there. You have to remember the aerator helps reduce how many gallons per minute comes out of that faucet. But if the aerator is gone, it's going to be like five gallons a minute flow rate. That's really fast. So just pro tip, go check all those uh, bathrooms to make sure that if once it turned it on, you're not getting what will happen to me, <laughs> which is a leaky uh, a kitchen where the water spills all over the hardwood floor. <laughs> yes, that happened to me with the president of the bank that I do business with. Yes, that's a true story. So Mr. Fitzgerald and Mrs. Fitzgerald had this same problem, uh, but low water pressure and iron. We fl were flushing the lines at their house. I turned on the, master, the kitchen sink, thinking the drain was gonna work fine. And next thing you know, Mrs. Fitzgerald and I are in the basement and I got water dripping on me. And I'm like, what's that from? And it didn't even dawn on me that the kitchen sink's overflowing. We ran upstairs and my God, all I can say is that they were such kind people. They did not get too mad at me. Uh, they were still grateful that they had the right water system to solve the problem. And we, I brought guys over and we helped clean everything up so they, it wasn't so bad. But, but, you know, pro tip, make sure the drains are working. Now, flushing those lines is very important. Flushing out the aerators. Sometimes you can take aerators off and you got to clean them toothbrush or, you know, with a toothbrush, sometimes with a chemical compound. Um, we use CLR sometimes. I prefer not using CLR because it's so bad. If you've seen some of my other videos, I talk about how bad chemicals going down the septic tank ruins the digestive tract of the septic field, which can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. That's why no chemicals really should be used in the house on a private well because you can ruin your septic field. So, but what I do like is I like using baking soda and vinegar, put it in a little bowl and let this stuff sit in there. Sometimes squeezing a little lemon in there as well will really clean that stuff up. 
That's a great natural way and you don't have to worry about how that affects, uh, you don't have to worry about nasty chemicals that you're inhaling and wearing um, gloves and a mask when you're doing that. Now, cleaning those things up, that may very well improve, improve the water pressure as well because now you're cleaning out the shower head or aerators that run all the faucets. That's probably a great start for all of you on a private well. For all of you on city water, we're gonna start talking about that, but before we jump into that, please, if you like this video, if you know people who, have, who uh, own a house with water and almost everyone can deal with the water pressure issue, please share this video because we'd love to be able to help them out as well. Um, click like, share it, and please subscribe to our channel. Uh, people who are on city water, why would you have this problem? Well, let's take a look at it. Most cities have calcium in their water. That's the rock. So if calcium is in your water supply, you can test that. It's measured in grains per gallon. A professional water treatment company can help you do that, or a professional laboratory can test that water. You'd want to know if you have anything over three to five parts or three to find grains per gallon, then it is highly likely that that calcium is gonna plug up those things I just mentioned. Yes, the faucets, especially if you have very expensive foreign, which is usually French, like growy faucets. They have very small little aerators in there, especially the showers. Oh my God, it's such a major headache. And guess what? They're behind tile. So for me to go replace them as a plumbing company, it's a big deal. A lot of times we got to cut open the drywall behind the wall to access this stuff and replace it. So that's why it's so important to get yourself a solid water softener up front because that calcium can plug those pore, those orifices of very fine fixtures and making it very expensive one day in the future to fix. Not to mention it can plug the aeration faucets, the, faucet, the aerators on your faucets. So what we find is the majority of times someone with low water pressure on city water, they're telling us, hey, it's, it's in one spot of the house. Why is that? Well, it's going to be the aerator. It's going to be the faucets, uh, something along those lines that's causing that problem. If the whole house has a low water pressure issue, well, now we might be talking a problem with the city. Now, the best way to be able to do that is hire a professional and do a pressure test at the water meter. See whether or not you're having high, what does, what does that water pressure look like? Some people live in high rises. I want you to realize if you, it's usually about story at the third level, they have booster pump systems. And if those, in many cases, they put them in, in parallel, two of them in case one goes down. So you can't have one go down, but the water's still trying to slip through it and you have a low pressure issue. So they should be inspected every year. It's worth that investment on a community like a condo complex to check those pressure pumps because you will have people who are out of water. I had that happen with a place I rented in Chicago. So, but, you know, please, if you're on your, uh, uh, if you're on the uh, building association, you want to make sure that that becomes a regular investment. Remember when it comes to water, we all need it. I mean, people think to themselves, they're like, well, you know, I don't really, we can put that aside. We don't have to spend money on that, but you have to remember without water, what do you have? No way to flush your toilet. <laughs> That's a big problem. You have nothing to drink, no way to wash. You know, so these having water is almost as important as having uh, your air, con air conditioner and your heater work. Now those usually mean that people jump on it right away, but I promise you an ounce of prevention is way less money than a monster cost somewhere down the line. Now, when you live in a pri on a house that's on city water, that calcium is our number one culprit in plugging all those fixtures. So what can you do? You can get yourself a water softener. A water softener actually does what's called ion exchange. It means it pops off the water droplet, the, the calcium off the water droplet and replaces it with a sodium ion. Just so you know, if you've Googled water softeners, you saw an ad for salt-free water conditioners and everyone says, don't buy a water softener because this is the newest, latest technology. Eh, I can tell you right now, we've sold them and then we had to replace them. Here's why. They say as you run it through a salt-free conditioner that it keeps the calcium attached to the water droplet. I've even had a scientist who read the paperwork and he's like, 
Andrew, I'm telling you, what they wrote is makes a lot of sense. And he made me go back, not made me, but I mean, I was so curious about it. I'm like, there's just no way this doesn't make any sense. So I went back and reread all this information over and over and over again. And I'm like, I don't know where this guy's getting it. He's reading this information on, on Next Media. That's the main media that people, water dealers buy to put inside the tanks that keeps the, the calcium attached. The only thing that we can see is that it does prevent the plumbing pipes from getting clogged. By the way, I even went to A.O. Smith, who sells water heaters, went to their facility where they were testing these things. And in their scientific study, what they, they were trying to prove that a salt-free conditioner, because they own a company called Aquasana, who sells a ton of these, and they were trying to prove that it worked and it helped prevent scaling inside the water heater. And yes, they saw a little improvement, but that's all they saw. When the water hits the air, it comes out of the faucet, it starts to oxidize. It hits air. Air is an oxidant. It's pretty simple chemistry. So that gentleman, the, the scientist that actually told me this, that he did all the research and he thinks he wants salt-free conditioner, guess what? I got him one. I was trying to talk him out of it, got him one, and guess what? He dealt with that hard water. His children dealt with frizzy hair. His family dealt with dry, itchy skin. They dealt with white film all over their dishes. But yet that person was trying to say, I know what I'm talking about. I still would rather have that than salt in my water. And I'm like, no, well, you can switch to potassium chloride, number one, but the today's water softeners, there's some out there that actually use less salt. There's less salt in a glass of water than there is in a slice of white bread. They rinse themselves so clean. So today's technology with, with Eco Water and some other water, even Kinetico, there's, they're going to do, you're going to have very accurate dosing of salt and there's not the excess salt like there was in the 70s and 60s and even up into the 80s. The autotrol valves, the fleck valves, they're terrible. They left a lot of salt in. I understand. That's the main water softeners that were sold, the old Culligan stuff. Yeah, they leave a lot of salt in the water. Yes, you can taste it. Yes, it's, it may, may, maybe even make your skin itchy. But today's water softeners from a professional grade company like Eco Water, it is going to be able to uh, do exact salt dosing and you won't have that issue. So that said, those are some of the things that you can do to prevent your plumbing from actually uh, uh, having low water pressure as you move forward with owning that house. Now, I hope this has helped you out. As a licensed plumbing contract company, Angel Water, we have dealt with a lot of pressure issues. Again, a lot of them actually come from the water quality and from people not addressing it. Also on private wells, you'll see that it has a lot to do with the pressure system. That's why you need to have your well company come out about once a year to inspect the well, just to make sure everything's going okay. Again, an ounce of prevention is way better than having a monster cost somewhere down the line. Um, as you know, my name is Drew. I am here to serve you. My overall goal is to help save you money and make your family more healthy. So please don't forget to do water testing and to deal with professionals out there who have, who have a lot of experience in dealing with these kind of issues. Check out their Google reviews ask for uh, guarantees. That's the best way that you're going to find a high quality company to work with. If you have any questions, angelwater.com or call us at 847-382-7800.